Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing the heresies that have surfaced throughout the history of the Church, and today, we'll talk about Sabellianism. In the early 3rd century AD, there was a priest and theologian named Sibelius. This particular heresy took place during a time when people were trying to figure out how Jesus' nature worked. We know Jesus is God, of course. All Christians agree on that point. The question, rather, is how that works. How can Jesus be one of multiple persons of God? Sibelius is usually thought of as claiming that Jesus and God the Father weren't distinct persons, but only two aspects of one person. However, in reality, Sibelius' views were even more radical than just that. He didn't even think of the personhood of the Father or the Son as something which was substantially part of God. In his view, personhood within God arose from God displaying himself to his creatures. In short, on his view, personhood within God is less personhood and more like a role that one plays during a stage performance. Of course, this leads to many problems. If God is playing various roles, is he being honest in the roles he plays? And if not, how is that not an imperfection and therefore a sign that he's not really God? Even if he is being honest, all that means is that God is Jesus one day and the Father the next. In short, what Sibelius called persons really weren't persons at all. That's why people who talk about Sibelius usually boil down his views to that. With Sibelius, we begin to see the start of the heresies that target the nature of Jesus, either as God, as man, or as both. What's really crushing to Sibelius' views is that he can't claim that Jesus was even a person, nor, for that matter, can he claim that God the Father is a person. However, if the Father and the Son weren't two persons, there wouldn't be any point in referring to them separately. Yet Jesus clearly spoke of them separately when he said, Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. Next, we're moving forward in time another hundred or so years to pay a visit to Bishop Arius. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.